Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning we have the latest sign of deadly shooting that happened on the city's west side. As more travelers take to the skies, the Transportation Security Administration is projecting many of the nation's airports will experience staffing shortages. What that means for your next vacation. Outside with live camp bathed in continuing humidity across the San Antonio metropolitan area this morning, including the Texas Hill Country. When will things start to dry out a bit? We'll talk to Mike coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, June 10th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, prepare for that humidity again. <laughs> Any relief in sight, Mike Oster H? Well, did you know when you step outside this morning, it's still really humid. Slightly better, though. A little bit. Yeah, we're talking I a little. I just thought that was the leftover air conditioning <laughs> following me out of the house. <laughs> That too. Uh, but, good in, uh, yeah. uh, but no, actually, it's down. The humidity is down ever so slightly, and it's going to be down a little bit by later on this afternoon. So uh, it's, we're not going to have those outrageously high heat index readings later on today. Still going to be hot, still going to be humid, but again, not as bad. 76 here in town, 75 Comfort, Castroville, uh, 78, 79 in Stinson. And these numbers, yeah, they're well above 70, obviously, but they are down a few degrees the past couple of days we've had these dew points well around uh, say what 75 76 here in town so yeah it's down slightly I mean still pretty darn humid out there as we were talking about so heat index readings aren't quite as high 82 is what it feels like in Stinson remember uh, what was it just a couple of days ago down around Pleasanton this early in the morning it felt like 87 degrees so 78 is a whole lot better than that. And as far as the allergens, mold really dropped down. That's the lowest it's been in almost a month. So, yeah, things are continuing to dry out. 92 for a high temperature today. Again, the high humidity kept us at 90 again yesterday. We'll get up to a normal average high temperature later on today. Heat index readings, yeah, they are going to be there. But, again, not quite as outrageous. We don't have any heat advisories posted anywhere around the area, nor any statements about high heat stress, anything like that. Obviously, take it easy if you're outside. Weekend forecast is coming Coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, investigators are still trying to determine if a 31 year old man will be charged with shooting and killing a 63 year old man at a gas station parking lot. San Antonio police say it happened yesterday in the 11,300 block of Petranco Road on the city's west side. According to police, the younger man told officers that he was getting ready to leave the area when an older man's vehicle cut him off. Police say that younger man told investigators that he shot the older man because he pointed a gun at him and fired in self-defense. Officers say the victim was shot multiple times and airlifted to a hospital where he later died. A new warning for anyone traveling this summer, whether you're grabbing an Uber or flying for your vacation. Prepare to wait longer and to pay more. ABC's Andrea Fujii explains why. This morning, a heads up for travelers. The TSA is warning about staffing shortages at more than 130 airports this summer. The problem so bad, TSA office workers are now being asked to volunteer for airport duty. With more Americans traveling again, airports are busier, wait times are longer, and the TSA is under pressure. Some flyers now being told to arrive three hours before their flight. Race car driver Tommy Joe Martins tweeted video from Charlotte's airport saying, Congrats, Charlotte Airport, for the single biggest TSA checkpoint disaster I've ever seen. In Austin, some people are waiting two hours just to get through security. There's going to be a lot more busy days really heading into the future, which is why we are encouraging folks to plan ahead, give themselves that extra time. The TSA hopes to hire 6,000 new officers, offering incentives like a $1,000 bonus. The message for, for the traveling public is please look at TSA as a great place to come work. The travel frustrations extend beyond the airport. There's also a shortage of taxi, Uber and Lyft drivers to get you there. And that means a big spike in prices, up to 40% higher nationwide for car share services in recent weeks. One man says his 20 mile Uber ride to New York's JFK airport cost him $248, tweeting, today my Uber ride from Midtown to JFK cost me as much as my flight from JFK to San Francisco. New York City restaurants opened up and uh, grocery stores and people are going out to retail and enjoying, uh, you know, enjoying behaviors that they used to. Um, that created a really uh, uh, strong surge in demand and there just weren't the drivers to keep up with that demand. And so that's when you see the high prices. Many drivers also quit during the pandemic and have yet to return. Uber now paying bonuses, hoping to get them back. Another reason for the shortage, many drivers started working for delivery services during the pandemic, where they could often make more money. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York.
One year ago, the U.S. was the deadliest hotspot for the pandemic, forcing the cancellation of the Group of Seven Summit. Now, the U.S. a model for how to successfully emerge from the global pandemic. For President Joe Biden, it's a personal vindication of his pledge to turn around the virus here in the U.S., but also a global call to action for other nations. In a speech he gave on the summit, uh, the eve of the G7 summit in Cornwall, England, today, President Biden will unveil plans for the U.S. to donate 500 million vaccine doses around the world. Biden is also expected to ask fellow G7 leaders to do the same. And no more Keystone Pipeline project. TC Energy says that it has terminated the effort. This move does not come as a shock considering President Joe Biden revoked a key permit when he took office in January. The Keystone project has been a political landmine over the past few years. Supporters saying it would benefit the U.S.'s energy capabilities, while critics say it posed a threat to the environment. The Texas Bar Association has opened an investigation of whether Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton failed uh, fails efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election amounted to professional misconduct. After Paxton petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court in December to block Joe Biden's victory, a Democratic Party activist filed a complaint with the bar calling the case frivolous. The bar initially declined to investigate, but a tribunal overturn that decision late last month. The investigation is another liability for Paxton, who's facing a years old criminal case, a newer separate FBI investigation and a Republican primary opponent. And here's the weekly update on the coronavirus cases here at home. The seven day average now stands at 80 cases per day and no new deaths were reported. There continues to be a decrease in our hospitals. We have 123 COVID-19 patients being treated. 41 are the intensive care unit and 19 are on ventilators. Texas Department of State Health Services reports nearly 56% of Bear County uh, residents ages 12 and up have at least one dose of a vaccine. 45% are fully vaccinated. Metro Health continues to help with pop-up vaccine clinics around town. More are scheduled for today. First one starts at 10 a.m. at Carver Library. We have the entire list on our website at ksat.com. And time now is 4.37, and it's about 76 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, we have some of the best simple ways to keep your lawn green and healthy this summer. Also next in sports, some surprising news from Tom Brady. Plus, it wasn't a very good night for the San Antonio Missions. And back outside with live cam. Hopefully the AC is cranking or the fan is running on full blast. You're going to need it again today. Mike's Thursday forecast is coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. We are just getting started. 40 in morning sports, a not so good night for the San Antonio Missions baseball team. The team definitely not on fire as they were the last couple of games. Missions ended up walking 10 batters, had three errors during their loss to Midland last night. Team also hit three batters during the ball game. Final score 9 1. Series against the Rockhounds continues tonight at 7 0. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firms. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott C says he is now officially recovered from that gruesome ankle injury he suffered last season in week five against the Giants. He says the first time he buried his ankle injury for good was on Cinco de Mayo and he did some dance moves and felt like he was ready to go. That's when he said in his head the injury was gone. Still, he had to build up confidence on the field and ever since the Cowboys started offseason workouts, that's what Dak has been doing. Meanwhile, Tom Brady is now 15 weeks past offseason knee surgery. He looks in top shape in both the organized team activities and now mandatory minicamp. What surprised many is when Brady revealed he started having knee problems last spring. That would be right before his latest Super Bowl run. So he still managed to earn his seventh ring, another Super Bowl MVP, throwing for over 4,600 yards and 40 touchdowns, even when he was not at 100% at 43 years of age. Oh, that's impressive. why they call him the GOAT. That's right. <laughs> Very impressive. Time now, 441 and about 76 degrees right now. If you have a green thumb, congratulations. Caring for your <laughs> lawn might not be high on your priority list. Up next, changes you can make that will strengthen your lawn and keep the weeds away. And also up next, have you noticed your Uber or Lyft rides are a little more expensive? We're going to tell you the reason behind the skyrocketing rates. And welcome back. It's about 444 now. People who use ride shares such as Uber and Lyft are seeing skyrocketing rates. The cause is high demand and a shortage of drivers. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details of today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, rising rideshare prices. Prices on car services like Uber and Lyft skyrocketing as both major rideshare companies face an unprecedented driver shortage. E-commerce company Rakuten analyzed its data, finding that nationally it's seeing up to a 40% hike in rideshare pricing. And some big cities like L.A., Chicago and New York are at times seeing double that. New York City restaurants opened up and uh, grocery stores and people are going out to retail and enjoying, um, you know, enjoying behaviors that they used to. Um, that created a really uh, uh, strong surge in demand, and there just weren't the drivers to keep up with that demand, and so that's when you see the high prices. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the tips you need to get where you're going without hitting those spending speed bumps. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. With all the spring rain we've had, our lawns have been lapping it up and looking pretty green. But now when it comes to lawn care, a lot of people are rethinking chemicals and fertilizers. If that's you, 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris has some easy strategies to improve your lawn in an eco-friendly way. To put these Susan Rubin loves gardening, but without chemicals. You know, a little baby bok choy, some salad, um, and I got some radishes coming up. So yeah, this is dinner. If you're looking to improve your yard without using synthetic chemicals, Consumer Report says it requires some strategy and a holistic approach to improve your soil and prevent pest outbreaks before they happen. Start with your lawn. It may seem counterintuitive, but cut back on watering your lawn because watering less will encourage the grass to grow deeper roots and develop resistance to drought and water early morning night watering can sometimes promote fungus clover may get a bad rap but it's good for your lawn it adds nitrogen and keeps other weeds away when it's time to mow lawn care experts say keep the grass a little taller three or four inches keep the blades on your mower sharp and use the mulching mode which will cut the grass into fine clippings and deposit them back into the soil grass clippings contain many of the same nutrients found in fertilizers when it comes to plants, think native. Native plants have evolved to thrive exactly where they are, and they'll attract local birds and beneficial insects and pollinators. And if you have the space, add a compost pile or bin to recycle table scraps and garden waste. You'll then have nutrient-rich compost that your plants and lawn will love. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And lawnmowers have been getting a workout this spring. You mow it down about this far, and the next day it's already back up about an again. inch and a half. Yeah, I, I've been seeing a lot of my neighbors out lately because right. mm -hmm. they're having to take care of the lawn. Exactly. And Mike's here with more on our forecast, uh, lawn mowing forecast for the upcoming mm -hmm. weekend. I, well, not bad. I mean, it's, it's still humid out there, but yeah, nice problems to have. I mean, I'd rather be, True. and I was just encouraged by that story with the clover. <laughs> it's about all I got in my yard, but at least it's green. So yeah, I mean, I'd rather be cutting it than not have anything out there. So uh, yesterday, yeah, the sun was hiding behind a lot of clouds. They were holding in there uh, fairly, fairly thick, and that combined with the humidity kept temperatures at 90. And once again, we we're starting off with our clouds and humidity. Now, I know it's not a lot, small steps, I guess, but dew points are down a degree or two compared to uh, what they were yesterday. And what we're going to be seeing, though, this afternoon is dew points dropping down a little bit more going through that usual cycle because that's been the, the big problem. Obviously, the humidity has just stayed outrageously high in the afternoon. Usually we have higher humidity in the morning, but it is going to kind of go through that cycle. Things are obviously drying out a little bit more. It'll come back up uh, overnight and tomorrow morning and then the same thing tomorrow. Dew points will be dropping down. Still, it's going to be humid out there, so we will still have heat index readings to deal with, but again, not quite as high. We're still going to be in the uh, the area where you know above 105 you got to watch it down to the southwest but like i said off the top of the show we don't have any advisories no uh, official statements out there from the the weather service but obviously you want to take it easy if you can cut your grass in the morning save yourself a little bit of sweat all right we've got our low clouds hanging around here you can sort of see that little bit of a uh, darker shade of gray filling in and then around the country, not much. I mean, upstream, look at that. That's actually still in the higher elevations. Got some mixed precipitation out there in the, uh, well, that the Sierra Nevada. And uh, off to the east, got some storms down to the southeast. But for us, that's that high. It's still dominating things, and that's helping to obviously dry us out a little bit. So that stays in place. We get into a 
I hate to use the word typical, but typical summer pattern. Clouds in the morning, more humidity, a little bit drier in the afternoon. And as it dries out, then the drier air heats up a little more easily than moist air does. So that's why we make it up into the mid 90s by the weekend. So that's through the weekend. Not really a whole lot going on around here. Then we start to go into the first part of next week and we're going to see these little, you know, coming around the uh, front side of that high. You're going to see some of these little glitches in here. And so that's why we'll have the chance for a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm Tuesday and then even into Wednesday. Uh, low ones to try and develop down here in the Gulf. Some of the latest models, if that does happen, would take it off to the uh, east of us. So again, we'll have a couple of shots at some rain by the middle part of next week and a couple more clouds some lower temperatures as well. 85 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and once again going for 92. Yes, heat index readings will be up there, but not quite as humid as the past couple of days in the afternoon. Still, it's going to be warm out there. We still want air conditioning, but Maybe it'll at least shut off and cycle through once in a while during the <laughs> afternoon. Uh, mid 90s over the weekend and for Monday, Flag Day, a couple of uh, showers by Tuesday, Wednesday. Would you say uh, with the computer, computer models, there's kind of wide disagreement about this thing in the Gulf and what it might do next no, week? I mean, it, it's nothing. It's just, you know, something a little bit of a low to mm -hmm. try and develop out there. So nothing okay. really going with it right now. OK. All right. All right. Thank we'll you, Mike. watching you closely then. <laughs> 451, close. 76 degrees. And coming up next, after 14 years, tonight is the last night of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. We're going to have a sneak peek of the final episode. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 263, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 1, 8, 2, 6, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 6, 12, 15, 16, 30. And a lot of Texas, 1, 11, 17, 32, 44, 52. And your Powerball number is 19, 28, 46, 50, 54, Powerball 9, Power Play 2. Good luck. Approaching 5 2. It's a very sad day or a very happy day for entertainment, depending on how you look at it. After today, theoretically, no more Kardashians. For a little bit, so what's happening in Hollywood? Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We won't be going forward with filming the show anymore. After tonight, no more Keeping Up with the Kardashians. The pioneering reality show about a famous family airs its final episode after 14 years and 20 seasons. So why was it so successful? Dave Schilling, co-host of the pop culture podcast Galaxy Brains, has an idea. It was like a pinhole into the most absurd, fantastic life you've ever seen. And sometimes it was too intimate and too too much to handle. But don't worry, we'll get more to handle. A new version of the show will hit Hulu later this year. Tonight, the journey begins again. With Chris Harrison exiting the Bachelor franchise, ABC announcing it's closed deals with a few rotating hosts to head up the summer season of Bachelor in Paradise, and it's an eclectic group. Comedian David Spade, which we already knew about, plus actor Titus Burgess, rapper Little John, and in-sync singer Lance Bass. Let's go to the beach each, let's go get a wave. Say what they're gonna say. No more songs for Zoe. NBC has canceled the critically acclaimed series Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist after two seasons. The show reportedly won't transfer over to NBC's Peacock streaming service, but there are plans to shop it elsewhere. And how are you gonna do that? Harass everyone I know until they burst into a musical number. Had a girl. And supermodel and actress Kate Upton with a birthday today. She's 29, while R&B singer Faith Evans is 48. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. We have some late breaking news right now. You are looking live at a uh, massive fire happening right now up on the north side. This is in the 2400 block of Wurzbach Parkway. It's listed as an apartment complex. There are roughly 30 San Antonio Fire Department units on scene. Our Tiffany Huertas is out there and is gathering more information. We're hoping to have a live report coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. For now, it's 456 and about 76 degrees out there. Still ahead, a look at President Biden's meeting with the world leaders at the G7 summit and his message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Plus, Facebook is getting into the smartwatch business. We're going to take a look at what the special features will be ahead in Tech Bytes. And later on GMSA at 6 this morning, the pandemic shook up the classroom. At 6, we'll tell you about new teaching methods that can help your child. And a quick look out with Trans Guy, 281 at Grayson. Things looking okay right now, but we are going to check in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And late breaking news right now. We are tracking a fire at an apartment complex off Wurzbach Parkway. Our Tiffany Huertas is standing by with a live report. 
President Biden set to make a major announcement during his first trip overseas as commander in chief. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at about 76 degrees. It's still humid out there, but maybe not as humid. We have more on that fire coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, June 10th. Thanks for joining us today. For now, let's go ahead and check with Mike to see just how humid it would be today. Well, hey, we're going to get a little break. Little being the operative word. You know, you're not going to walk outside and it's not going to feel like, you know, this bone dry air or anything like that. Uh, so it's just little minor little differences. See that bottom number there, dew point is 72. Just a couple of days ago, and yesterday it was up in the mid 70s. So with dew points, a couple of degrees does make a whole lot of difference, especially when you're, you know, difference between, say, 75, 76, and 72. Um, still, obviously, it's pretty humid out there. Got a lot of clouds around and uh, we're going to make it up to 92 later on today and we will see more of the the afternoon drop in humidity again, not bone dry air, but a little more comfortable than it has been the past couple of afternoons. The aquifer went up one tenth of a foot yesterday and the allergens mold really came down. One of the lowest readings we've seen in about a month or so because remember it was so sky high after all that rain heat index readings right now. We are still talking about a bit of a heat index, but again, these numbers are down somewhat compared to the past couple of days. It's not quite the <laughs> the wet towel slapped in the face when you step outside. Still really humid. Uh, 76 is what it feels like here in town. 82 at Stinson, but that's the only 80 on the map. And just to compare, think back a couple of uh, days ago when it felt like about 87 degrees at this hour in Pleasanton. So a little bit of a break. Uh, warm and humid this morning, obviously. And yeah, I mean, still humid today, but not quite as humid. We don't have any heat advisories, uh, nothing like that. Obviously still take it easy. And then sunshine, we will, as we dry out a little bit more then temperatures kind of creep up a couple of notches going on into the uh, the weekend and then next week we'll start off warm but then by midweek uh, a couple of showers and a few degrees lower we'll take that anytime a little free rain a little drop in temperatures it's okay in our book details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos good morning sir what's going on hey Mike not much right now and there's good news if you're gonna be heading out the door in the next few minutes there's not gonna be many problems that you're gonna encounter on the roadways although we have spotted a few slowdowns right now here on 35 southbound right at Schwab Road we've told you this about this This usually kind of picks up around this time uh, that is due to construction that is happening out there in that area that tends to clear as the morning does pick up but do expect if you're going to be heading out from New Braunfels, perhaps into the downtown San Antonio area. We do have some slowdowns that are is right now 16 miles per hour and a little bit further in those southbound lanes around 39 miles per hour. So again, be prepared to slow down. Other than that, it is a pretty quiet morning here around the Alamo City. Again, some slowdowns actually out here on 87 going out to Lavernia, but mostly just a lot of green that we're seeing this morning. So that's a good sign if you're going to be heading out in the next few minutes to maybe go fuel up or grab a cup of coffee. Let's go ahead and take a look at those inbound times right now on 35 30 from New Braunfels. We're looking at a half an hour commute time to downtown San Antonio. And if you're coming in from new, uh, new pardon me, 281 from Bulverde, we're looking at a 26 minute commute time. And if you're coming in from Bernie on I-10 right now, we're looking at 24 minutes. A quick quick view that is at trans guide shows that things are pretty smooth right now. US 90 at 36 people getting out the door, but right now no major issues to report on the roadways, but we'll be watching closely here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. All right, thank you very much, Stephen. Firefighters on the scene of a massive fire on the northeast side. Initially, I said Wurzbach Parkway, but this is being reported in the 2400 block of Harry Wurzbach, Cross Streets Riddiman and Burns Drive. Our Tiffany Huertas is at the scene, standing by live. Now, Tiffany, what can you tell us right now? Mark, Stephanie, a very tragic morning for residents who live in these apartments, a massive fire. Just take a look right behind me as firefighters try to put out the fire at this apartment complex on the 2400 block of Harry Wardsbach Road. EMS and police are also here on the scene. There are a lot of people who live in these apartments and are waking up to this nightmare. Some have already evacuated at this time. We don't know if anyone was injured or what caused this fire, but again, take a look as fire crews are trying to put out this fire. And I just spoke with residents who live right next to where they say the fire started and they say they lost everything. Now, if you are heading around this area, please avoid it and stay with us online on KSAT.com for the latest. Back to you.
All right, more updates coming up from Tiffany Huertas out there on the northeast side. President Biden's first foreign trip as commander in chief is now officially underway. In between a series of high stakes meetings with world leaders, President Biden is also expected to make an announcement today about the fight against COVID-19. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, high profile meetings on President Biden's agenda ahead of his first G7 summit, touching down in England Wednesday. The president previewing his eight day trip in a fiery speech to American troops. His high stakes sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin top of mind. I'm heading to the G7, then to the NATO ministerial, and then to meet with Mr. Putin to let him know what I want him to know. According to the White House, the president will pressure Putin on recent cyber attacks on U.S. entities, Russia's election interference, and human rights violations. We're not seeking conflict with Russia. We want a stable, predictable, predictable relationship. The United States will respond in a robust and meaningful way when the Russian government engages in harmful activities. Biden also distancing himself from the former Trump administration, declaring traditional American diplomacy is back as he looks to rebuild relationships with key U.S. allies that have frayed in recent years. Our alliances weren't built by coercion or maintained by threats. We're going to make it clear that the United States is back and democracies of the world are standing together. Later today, President Biden also set to make a major announcement about the global fight against the COVID pandemic. ABC News has learned as the U.S. sits on an excess of unused doses, the Biden administration is purchasing and donating another 500 million vaccine shots to developing nations. After his meetings with leaders in the U.K. and the G7 summit, the president's next stop will be Belgium, where the NATO summit begins on Monday. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. This morning, authorities at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland still trying to verify whether a shooting happened yesterday, shortly before noon, when someone in, you know, one of, someone in one of Lackland's facilities reported hearing two gunshots that came from off base. A spokesperson says no one was hurt in the incident, and the base is being assisted by multiple agencies as they track down more information. JBSA says they had to take reports very seriously and thank local law enforcement for their help in the investigation. Businesses are still trying to get back to normal. One barbecue restaurant is slowly picking back up from a staffing shortage. Bruce Finley is the owner of B&B Smokehouse and is now getting to his goal of having 80 to 85 employees. He says he's always paid a living wage and higher, and now he's even offering incentives. We, you know, pay time off, dental, medical plans. Um, I don't know what else you can offer. You've seen people realize, hey, I need to start looking for a job because the money is going to go away. BNB's owner says he's even been forced to raise some prices because there's not enough truckers to transport his most popular items. While he is nearly fully staffed, he's still hiring to meet demand. It's now 508, about 76 degrees. And still ahead, Facebook getting ready to release its first smartwatch. We're going to tell you about all the features it will have. And up next, Fiesta is coming up soon. We'll tell you about the best ways to get tickets to this year's Texas Cavaliers River Parade. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting to another humid day at 76 degrees, but slightly not as humid. We'll take it. We'll be right back. Five eleven. can you believe it? Fiesta is almost here. And that means the Texas Cavaliers River Parade is getting ready to hit the river. The parade is happening Monday, June 21st at 7 p.m. And more than 300,000 guests are expected to be there. I will tell you, this is the only parade during Fiesta this year. So kind of another point to how much energy, how exciting it's going to be, uh, great tickets to have. We have a link to get your tickets uh, to the parade right now on KSET.com. While you're there, you can check out all their other Fiesta events lined up this year. Very exciting. It's finally happening. I know. <laughs> Time now is 512 and about 76 degrees right now. Up next, why President Joe Biden backing down on a Trump administration executive order that sought to ban TikTok and WeChat. Plus a first look at Sony's new professional drone that will set you back $9,000.
thousands of women with metastatic breast cancer are living in the moment and taking iBrands. iBrands with an aromatase inhibitor is for postmenopausal women or for men with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer as the first hormonal based therapy. iBrands plus letrozole significantly delayed disease progression versus letrozole. iBrands may cause low white blood cell counts that may lead to serious infections. Ibrands may cause severe inflammation of the lungs. Both of these can lead to death. Tell your doctor if you have new or worsening chest pain, cough, or trouble breathing. Before taking Ibrands, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, are or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding. For more information about side effects, talk to your doctor. Be in your moment. Ask your doctor about Ibrands. 515, President Biden has revoked the Trump administration's executive order that sought to ban the popular apps TikTok and WeChat. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, President Biden has revoked the Trump-era executive orders that attempted to ban TikTok and WeChat. Biden signed a new order requiring a review to identify any national security risks associated with apps tied to China. There's ongoing concern over apps that collect users' personal data. And Facebook is working on its first smartwatch, which will reportedly have a detachable camera and a heart rate monitor. It's expected to be out sometime next summer, and predictions are it could cost about $400. And finally, Sony has fully unveiled its new professional-grade drone, the AirPeak S1 is designed to work with Sony cameras. Sony says it's strong enough to stay stable in winds up to 45 miles per hour, but the price tag, about $9,000. I know it's on my Christmas list. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. It's I envision Christmas. the new KSAT Storm Tracker. Oh, yes. Maybe so. <laughs> it's going to have logos like our helicopter and everything. Maybe, yeah, maybe for like a, a business, but he was just saying about his Christmas list. Mm -hmm. There's no way unless he has a very generous friend. Can you? <laughs> no, well, our newsroom is large, but yeah. it's not that, that big, big, Mike Osterhage. Yeah. Yeah, Mike's already true. making plans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, put it on your Christmas list. Let's check traffic right now. 517. Stephen, what's up? Hey, good morning, guys. Well, you know what? It's been a pretty quiet morning here in the Alamo City. We got a view of Transguide right now working for us here. Let's go ahead and walk over and show you how smooth things are looking right now. Two to one at almost people getting out on the roads around this time. We know people are going to be heading to work or getting their days started early with us. So they, I, thankfully, they don't have any issues that uh, to be on the lookout for right now. Loop 410 at Babcock Road. Things looking pretty good so far, uh, but we have spotted a slow down here on 35 southbound that's still becoming a little bit of an issue if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area right near Camol County. Construction is still going on there at I-35 southbound at Schwab Road and traffic is slowing down there to 12 miles per hour. Uh, this should be wrapping up soon, so this will likely be picking up as the morning does progress, but we'll be watching that and seeing how that could impact anybody's commute time this morning. Uh, we've also spotted a stall that looks like it's uh, right over here at I-35 southbound at West Martin, not impacting traffic at this time, but that's another thing that we'll be keeping a close eye on here in the traffic lab. Now, some things to keep on the lookout for. We are talking about construction. There is a lane closure that was happening earlier this morning from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. It was off 281 uh, nor alternating northbound lanes from Bolverde to the county line. They're doing some road work there. In fact, as I was coming out to the station this morning, I think I saw these guys out there on 281. So just be prepared for that. If you have an overnight commute that these lanes will be closed and it'll be alternating at least until tomorrow. So we'll be watching that as well. One last look here at Transguide I-10 at Days of Allah. Things are shaping up quite nicely and hoping it stays that way. Yeah, it looks nice for Thursday morning. <laughs> Fly it up in toward the sales hall right there in the newsroom. I'm I sure <laughs> uh, everybody that works upstairs yeah, go spy on the will love there. that. <laughs> They're like, you guys are already noisy enough down in the newsroom. And now you have a <laughs> giant drone. <laughs> I mean, unless it's dropping off a pizza or something. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, I'm about that. Coffee or coffee's better. Oh, that's true. We need coffee in the morning. Back to reality. Yeah, yesterday, a lot of clouds still hung on in there, but uh, we did see some sunshine and made it up to 90 again, second day in a row, and due in part to extra clouds hanging around here and also that very high humidity because it takes a lot more energy to heat up moist air. Now, we are going to see a little bit 
little bit operative word drop in the humidity in the afternoon. So it's going to be not quite as just outrageously uh, you know, oppressive with the heat index. Visibility Kerrville is at four miles right now. Seven Castroville was down to three just a couple of uh, moments ago. So little bits of fog here and there. And again, we made it up to 90 yesterday. 101 Laredo Eagle Pass Del Rio both hit 99. And later on today, we're still looking at some uh, mid upper 90s and low hundreds off to the west. Heat index readings in and around town about low to mid 90s. And again, that's going to be very dependent upon uh, some some of the, uh, the cloud cover out there. Heat index readings. Yes, it is still going to be hot. We still have humidity, but these numbers aren't quite as hot as what they were. There are no heat advisories issued, so a little bit of a break, slightly more tolerable later on today, and it will become a bit more tolerable tolerable in the afternoons as we go on into the uh, the weekend as the ground as things tend to dry out just a little bit. So here's the uh, computer model going into the next couple of days and what we're going to be seeing is morning clouds, a little more sunshine in the afternoon. Same thing, uh, you know, if there's mist around the area, don't be surprised by that in the morning hours and same going on into the weekend. Again, we continue to heat up a little bit more, so we're looking at mid 90s by the weekend. Then going into the first of the week Monday and I know earlier this week we had talked about a little rain chance maybe on Monday. That looks like it's kind of getting pushed back somewhat. So by Tuesday, maybe late Monday, Tuesday, and this is again broad brush, but there is going to be the chance for a couple of uh, sprinkly showers around here, maybe a thunderstorm or two Tuesday, as well as going into Wednesday. Not great rain chances as of right now, but we'll have little disturbances kind of sliding on in here to at least give us a shot at some rain and the extra cloud cover hold temperatures down a couple of notches. 85 today at noon, partly sunny skies, and once again, we will kind of just barely make it up to a normal high temperature, 92. And again, not quite as humid, still humid, but a little bit of a break in the afternoon. We'll take anything we can get with this, and that'll be the situation tomorrow. And then going into the weekend, again, as things dry a little bit more, you go up a degree or so each and every day, mid 90s weekend through Monday and a couple of showers by Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, typically this is uh, the time of the month where counties start enacting fireworks bans going into Independence Day. Great. But right now, things are looking pretty good. Yeah, right. Obviously, we're still a month away, a little bit less than a month mm -hmm. away. Um, I think it may depend on, even though, you know, aquifers up, we had a lot mm -hmm. of rain, yes. mm -hmm. some of the vegetation, if we don't get anything between now, right. we could drive. So obviously, that's one thing we have to keep watching out there. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hopefully, maybe the 20% will, will play out next yeah. week. <laughs> Every few days, maybe a shower or two. That'll help. Thank you, Mike. 522, about 76 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, why In the Heights might be many moviegoers' reason to return to theaters, plus a first look at Jessica Chastain as Tammy Faye Baker. Yeah, that's a shocker. Wait do you see those images. It doesn't even look like Jessica Chastain. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, six, three, Fireball nine, daily four, one, eight, two, six, Fireball one. Cash five, six, 12, 15, 16, 30, and Lotto Texas, one, 11, 17, 32, 44, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 19, 28, 46, 50, 54, Powerball nine, Power Play two, good luck. 525, we're mixing movie and music in our entertainment report as more people find themselves returning to theaters. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The moment when you do better than me, because you can see a future that I can. The future looks bright for the box office. In the Heights opens today, and in a Fandango survey of fans planning to see the musical on the big screen, 96% say it'll be their first visit to a movie theater since the pandemic began. Co-star Jimmy Smits calls the film a great way to reopen our lives. After the time that we've spent kind of locked up and having to grapple not only with my medical issues, but very broad social reckonings that we've had to do deal with. We're open and available and, and really ready as an audience to, to, to accept this piece of, of joy that we're going to give. That's Jessica Chastain as Tammy Faye Baker, alongside Andrew Garfield as Jim Baker in the first trailer for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. The film charts the televangelist couple's rise, fall, and redemption in the 1970s and 80s. It's due in theaters September 17th. This is who I am. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
that's it later in life wow. that looks for me looks totally different yeah she does and good job <laughs> and spider-man himself is jim baker on choices <laughs> yes. 527 about 76 degrees and still ahead on jmsa parts of the country are facing major flooding and storm concerns while other states facing fire and severe drought. Plus, better have a backup drink ready when you go to Starbucks next time. We'll tell you why more than 25 items are being removed from their menu. And Latino students were once the fastest growing group of college undergraduates. Why enrollment numbers are taking a big dive. And ahead this morning on GMSA at 6, a massive alligator scene roaming a Houston area neighborhood. We'll show you how crews managed to get the reptile back in the water. From extreme flooding to extreme drought, a closer look at states dealing with treacherous weather conditions. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is not as humid as it was yesterday. There's the good news, but it's still going to be a warm day. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It's June 10th. We begin with uh, an update on late breaking news. Firefighters continue to fight a massive fire on the northeast side in the 2400 block of Harry Wurzbach Road. Tiffany Huertas is standing by live and Tiffany, what can you tell us at this point? Mark, Stephanie, I just spoke with some residents who live in this apartment building right behind me who are devastated and say they lost everything. Again, let's take a look. Firefighters try to put out the fire this morning at this apartment complex on the 2400 block of Harry Warsbach Road. EMS and police are also on the scene. Firefighters are using aerial platforms to spray from above. There are a lot of people who live in these apartments and are waking up to this nightmare. We've seen families evacuate with their pets at this time. We don't know if anyone was injured or what caused this fire. But again, take a look as fire crews try to put out this fire. I just spoke with a woman who saw this on the news and came to check on her family member who lives in the apartment right behind this one. She tells me she hasn't been able to connect with her loved one and she is very concerned. Again, if you are passing through this area please try to avoid it as it is surrounded by different fire trucks ems and also police stay with us on ksat.com for the latest back to you all right, we're going to continue to track that. Mike is here with more. Yes, and uh, we're going to say that's Harry Wurzbach right there near the cross street of uh, Ritterman. Tiffany's going to be out there the rest of the, uh, the morning. All right, um, it is it's still, I mean, still warm, still humid out there. But yes, the humidity is down just a little, little bit when you step outside. That number, the dew point, a couple of days ago was up around 75, 76 degrees. And I know it's only a couple of notches, but... Uh, one or two degrees makes a whole lot of difference. So yes, still humid, but not just as oppressively humid as what we had been seeing around here. Heat index readings around the area. So we really don't have a heat index here in town to deal with right now. 82 is what it feels like at Stinson. And just to kind of compare to a couple of days ago, down around Pleasanton, a few days ago, it felt like 87 degrees at this hour. So we're at 78 as of right now. Mold is one of the lowest readings we've seen around here in almost a month. And uh, throughout the rest of today, we'll make it up to 85 at noon, 92 high temperature. And we will see a little bit more of a drop, the afternoon drop in humidity. It comes up overnight and in the morning and then drops down a little bit, so it'll be a bit more pleasant. We'll still have high heat index readings, but we don't have any advisories, anything like that posted. So you want to take it easy, obviously, or if you're outside in the afternoon. What's in store for the weekend? Details on that coming up in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, you know, things are looking pretty dark here at 35 at Schwab. This is a view from Trans Guide. You can see, although it looks dark, we do have traffic that's building up there. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the wall and show you the northbound lanes pretty quiet right now, but check out what's happening in the southbound lanes. Pretty busy over there. Now, as we mentioned a little bit earlier this morning on GMSA, there's construction that is happening in that area, and right now it's leading to a little bit of a buildup here in those southbound lanes of 35 right at Schwab. Check this out. 11 miles per hour in those southbound lanes. We're seeing a lot of red building up there and a little bit further. It's improving a little bit, uh, a little over 50 miles per hour, but uh, be on the lookout for that if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area from New Braunfels, perhaps. We are seeing some slowdowns this early in the morning. So let's go ahead and jump to another issue we've spotted right over here off crash off WW White Road at South Cross Road. You can see there's a little bit of a buildup happening there as well. Nothing too major to report right now, thankfully, but we'll be watching this one pretty closely and seeing how that's going to be developing throughout the morning. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these inbound times. If you are coming into the downtown San, An San Antonio area, that is from perhaps Floatusville, we're looking at about half an hour commute time from 37. If you are coming in from Pleasanton, we're looking at 28 
minutes right now. And if you are coming in from Lido on 35, we have a 17 minute commute time. We're bringing it back here to Schwab at 35 or 35 at Schwab. I should say traffic building still pretty dark out there. Be sure to be safe and uh, again, give these guys plenty of room out there as we know traffic is starting to build. Keep your lights on and hey, both hands on the wheel. Fires, flooding, storms, and drought. Dangerous weather crisscrossing the country right now. CNN's Brett Conway has a look at how different states are faring as meteorologists warn the worst may be yet to come. Too much rain in some parts of the country with more in the forecast. As other areas wish for rain and watch fires burn out of control. In the Mid-South, flooding. This is in Arkansas. Look closer. Roads, businesses, homes flooded. In Mississippi, this road was washed away. And today, parts of both states are facing a rare level four of four for flash flooding. The water was all the way up at the bottom of the door sill. And the threat is spreading into Alabama and Tennessee, too. In the northern plains and Rockies, folks are bracing for strong storms and the possibility of tornadoes. This one hit Monday in Colorado. Well, that used to be the cow barn. Wind out west has firefighters on edge. In Arizona, more than 150,000 acres have burned up between two separate fires. In Utah, the Bear Fire has scorched more than 5,000 acres so far. More than 20 active fires are burning in the region. It's extremely dry. In fact, there's widespread drought all over the West. On the Nevada-Arizona border, Lake Mead is expected to drop to its lowest levels since the Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s. In California, it's so bad officials worry they might have to shut down the hydroelectric power plant on Lake Oroville. New drought numbers are expected today with the expectation that drought conditions have gotten worse. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. Meat supplier JBS now admits it paid $11 million following, following that recent ransomware attack. The company says the infiltration shut down its beef processing operations last week. It says most facilities had come back online by the time it paid up, but it decided to do so to ensure customers face no risk. JBS says it doesn't think any private data got out during the ransomware attack. Beach Nut Nutrition is recalling one lot of rice cereal for babies due to high arsenic levels. Safety officials discovered the cereal tested above the Food and Drug Administration's maximum levels during a routine sample. No illnesses related to the product have been reported. Beach Nut says it is worried it cannot obtain rice flour that falls below the FDA's threshold, so it is exiting the rice cereal market entirely. 537, about 76 degrees. And still ahead, Black Friday slowly moving back to just Friday. Details on why more stores are deciding to close on Thanksgiving Day this year. Just ahead, Latinos once had the fastest growing college enrollment. A look at why then that growth has stalled. And taking a look outside with live cam. A little humid out there at 76, but it will heat up today. We're going to check in with Mike later on. 40 Latino students were once the fastest growing group of college undergrads. But recent statistics show enrollment since the pandemic is down among this group. As David Sears reports, a new study provides suggestions for bolstering college admissions. The COVID pandemic has affected education in so many ways, and some high school grads have considered a change of plans. I would definitely be doing a lot of my research before I started applying. I still had friends who were going at the time and they told me that it was like really, really difficult for them. The pandemic trend of foregoing college is affecting Latinos at a higher rate. In fact, amid the pandemic, Latino students are twice as likely to forego college plans than whites and blacks. Some Latino communities face disproportionate risks from COVID-19 and income loss due to the nationwide shutdowns, which may be playing a role in their post high school plans. Education scientists interviewed Latino students, parents and school counselors. The studies revealed the collaboration between parents, counselors and students is crucial and that recruiters need to provide resources such as mentors to support them through the enrollment process and not to forget to engage a parent as a key support. Studies have found that when school counselors invite parents into the college discussion, the college application process gets better. David Sears, KSA 12 News. Time check now 541, about 76 degrees. Up next, why some of your favorite items at Starbucks may no longer be available on the menu. 
And welcome back. It's about 544. In your morning consumer headlines, if you like hazelnut syrup in your coffee, you may be disappointed the next time you order your favorite drink at Starbucks. The coffee giant is putting a hold on 25 menu items and ingredients because of supply issues and shortages. The internal company update said the hold on those menu items will last, quote, until supply chain issues are resolved. So those items include things like hazelnut syrup, toffee nut syrup, and green iced tea. Supply chain issues have been impacting many businesses across multiple industries due to the pandemic. The once trusty typewriter, now a relic of the past, is making a comeback thanks to Lego. The legendary toy maker launching a model, the old school item that features moving keys and carriage. The set comes with nearly 2,100 pieces as designed to copy the style and function of an actual typewriter. Lego typewriter goes on sale this summer and will cost just under $200. Looks cool. And don't count on picking up a new TV or computer this Thanksgiving at Best Buy. The store announced its stores will not be open. This marks the second year the retailer's physical locations will be dark on the holiday. Target and Walmart have also said they will not be open. These moves come after some retailers begin opening on Thanksgiving to extend deals, typically reserved for Black Friday. Some critics pushed back, saying employees should not be forced to work on the holiday. The retailers likely no longer see it as necessary to open on Thanksgiving Day due to the strength of sales from online shipping. Can you pick up an old typewriter for under what that Lego one costs, I wonder? I'm sure. Well, actually, I don't know. You mean like that old? I don't know. Maybe like the 80s old. <laughs> you yeah. might have more luck finding something. Not the like kind that. of plug in, the older ones than that. Yeah, the old, like what the, the oh, Underwood was the original, one of the, the most oh. common those might be typewriters. Those ones be expensive just because yeah. they're empty. Yeah, I mean, if it's yeah. in good shape, it may be more than 200 I think right? so. return lever that mm -hmm. you had to push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. The old, very old school. Yeah. Very old school. I used a lot of liquid paper. <laughs> is, that, or no, is that what it was called, right? Yeah, like yeah. Liquid paper, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like using a laptop and computer, so you yeah, can backspace. Easier. So it's a little <laughs> bit easier, right? So, you know, uh, but you know, traffic looking pretty good right now at this hour. You know, we're watching closely a few things that are happening right now. Take a look at this crash here that we've been uh, having here on our system for a little while now. WW Wright Road at South Cross Road. Seen a little bit of a buildup there on 13, but nothing too major right now. Uh, the big thing that we are watching is this delay that we spotted over here in the southbound lanes of 35. Now there is construction that has been going on out there, but you can see the residual effects is leading to a buildup and just people uh, slow down pretty much essentially from 35 coming into the downtown San Antonio area from New Braunfels. All that red means traffic has slowed down to about 16 miles per hour and a little bit further, just a little under 40 miles per hour. Again, major slowdown there off 35 at Schwab and it's been there for quite a little while, but again, there was construction that was happening out in that area. Now we have a view from trans guy. This is a view from 35 at Ingle Road. It looks like quite the busy morning out there as people are getting out on the roadways and this is from southbound going into the downtown San Antonio area. So so just be prepared that we do have a busy start if you're coming in from New Braunfels. So, Steve, you're saying you've never used a typewriter? No, I mean, I, I've used oh. one. I've seen oh, yeah. one. Uh, my grandparents had one. My parents had one. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, but that, that, is, that is where I, 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 I saw a typewriter. And <laughs> Did you all learn to type on a manual I'm, typewriter? I, Not an electric? Yeah. Well, you no, know, actually, you know what? what's funny is I, I learned to type on a computer program, but I had to use a, a regular typewriter to type up my physics reports in high school, which is why I used a lot of liquid paper. Right? Uh, electric typewriter, even into college. Well, I had a little, yeah. but learned in ninth grade on mm -hmm. a, or eighth grade on a uh, manual on with manual. no uh, letters on the keys. Oh, wow. Really? Oh. Yeah, so you had to memorize all the keys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. No, I had a nice little computer program by the time I was learning how to type. So. Oh, boys are always like, so when you had a, so, no, no computers, no cell phones. <laughs> Who, okay, Stephen, have you ever used a phone where you dial it? Yeah. Right. The actual <laughs> dial. My, my grandparents have. grandparents, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. But not really. Mike's new series about the Roaring Twenties starts next week. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the mushrooms. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. We've seen all. <laughs> And more from Stephen's grandparents coming up in, <laughs> in the good old days uh, on the next uh, GMSA. Yeah, a lot of folks have been seeing all sorts of different uh, toadstools, mushrooms popping up with all the moisture that we have had around here. And again, watch it with the kids and the pets around those things. They are extremely dangerous. All right, we got a lot of 
our morning clouds. We're not seeing any mist around the area right now. Temperatures are still very, very warm. We're about four degrees above normal right now. Eventually, this will be our normal average low temperature once we get into the hottest part of the year, which is right around the first couple of weeks of August. But so we're right now a little bit above normal. The humidity dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. Yeah, just looking at the scale, you're above 70, so it's humid out there. But these numbers have come down a little bit, just a few degrees from the past couple couple of days, so it's just not as just overwhelmingly humid out there, and we will see more of the the 24 hour the daily cycle that we go through. Usually more humidity in the mornings and then in the afternoons. It comes down a little bit, comes up overnight, and we'll do the same thing tomorrow. So we'll see, you know, because in the afternoons, even yesterday, dew point stayed well up in the 75, 76 degree range, so it was just you know, hard to even walk outside, but it's going to be a little bit better. So yes, we will still have heat index readings well up into the hundreds, not quite as high as the past couple of days. I mean, it's still on the dangerous side when you get above 105, but we don't have any heat uh, advisories, anything like that, that are in effect. And if you look at the water vapor imagery, a lot going on off to the west of us, and you see the different movements around here. Here's the big area of high pressure, this clockwise circulation with these clouds over here, and then the big trough out there to the west of us. It's this high that is dominating things, although usually in the summertime, it's positioned off to the east of us, and that's why we continue with all the moisture around here. But in this situation, we are going to be seeing some little disturbances by Probably now, not until the middle part of next week. Little disturbances kind of sliding around that, and that would give us a uh, another chance at some rain by the middle part of next week. So forecast today, still going to be very warm, very humid, 85 degrees. Although high temperature will still be, you know, yesterday we stayed at 90, a couple of notches below normal. This is normal high temperature and still humid, not quite as humid, a little more tolerable, and that'll be the case as we continue on. As things dry out just a little bit, we'll see uh, temperatures creep up slightly, mid-90s over the weekend, and going into Monday, then small chance for a uh, shower, thunderstorm or two by Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, no keys, or no uh, letters on the keys. That makes it even so harder. You had, you had to memorize it, and so, yeah. Well, uh, I'm gonna discuss my memories with an abacus later. <laughs> you have to look that up. 551, about 76 degrees. And coming up before Hamilton, Lynn Manuel Miranda made his name with another award winning Broadway musical. We're going to get a preview of the movie version next. Pick three numbers 263, Fireball 9, a daily 4, 1826, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 6, 12, 15, 16, 30, Lotto, Texas, 1, 11, 17, 32, 44, 52. And your Powerball numbers 19, 28, 46, 50, 54, Powerball 9, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, President Biden's big announcement that massive 500 million vaccine donation to countries in need around the world as the president gears up for that high stakes G7 summit and his meeting with President Putin. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki joins us right here on GMA. Today's all we got, so we cannot stop. This is our block. In the Heights. Director John M. Chu takes Lin-Manuel Miranda's Tony-winning musical In the Heights from the stage to the big screen with Tony nominee Olga Meredith from the Broadway cast. He just kind of elevated it and opened it up in a, in a new and, and, and wonderful way. And a new group of triple threat performers. I can pitch as much as I want that we want, you know, to ease and out of mu music as if it's natural, but... But I'm not doing it. We gotta find people who do speak this language. You can go from song into dialogue into movement as if it is one language. Corey Hawkins, who plays Benny, remembers seeing the show on Broadway when he was living in Washington Heights. I recognized it. I recognized myself. I recognized um, the community, I, I knew what that was because I knew the love that they gave me when I when I got there. So I knew I, I connected to Benny already on an organic sort of cellular level. Bill Sherman and Alex Lacamoire, who won Tonys and Grammys for the stage show, were excited to revisit the music. When we knew we were doing this movie, we were like, well, it's got to be bigger and better and more awesome. And we, we kept on referring to it as 2.0. There are going to be people who are hearing it for the first time and will be like, oh my God, this music sounds so fresh. I'm really excited for people who might not be familiar with this work to be more familiar with it via the movie. We can tell everyone we know. We are not powerless. Hey. We are powerful. 
in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Back here at home, tickets selling quickly for this year's only Fiesta Parade. Not to worry, Texas Cavaliers River Parade will be broadcast right here on KSAT 12, your Fiesta station. It's happening June 21st at 7 p.m. If you'd like to try and see the parade in person, you can see if tickets are available. We have a link on our website at KSAT.com. Good news, Cowboys fans. Dak Prescott is officially uh, on the road to recovery. We'll take a look at his off the field progress. And ahead in our next hour, GMSA, a big win for TikTok, courtesy of the Biden administration. We'll have the details. And we'll have the latest on a massive fire at a northeast side apartment complex. Tiffany Huertas is standing by with a live report and the very latest. And Stephen Cavazos is back with a look at your Thursday morning commute. You're watching GMSA. So glad you're with us. Pour yourself a fresh cup of coffee. We will be right back at the top of the hour. Overnight, a massive fire at a northeast side apartment complex. We're staying on top of the story and we'll have the very latest. President Biden set to make a major announcement during his first trip overseas as commander in chief. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And taking a look out with live cam this morning. That's a pretty shot out there. We're shaping up for another hot day, but maybe not as humid as yesterday. And a good morning to you. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is Thursday, June 10th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. Get that coffee ready. We can make it through because tomorrow's Friday. That's right. One day closer to the weekend. Mike is here with more on that and how things are looking as we go into the upcoming weekend. We are seeing a little bit, we were talking about this yesterday, a little bit lower humidity. You know, slightly more pleasant this morning. So, okay, got a thumbs up from uh, Stephanie on that one. We'll take it. Yeah. Okay, you too. All yeah. right. <laughs> Just a little slow this morning. <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've still got our clouds out there, and yeah, it is still obviously very warm, but that's the actual uh, air temperature at 76 degrees, so we don't have that much of a heat index to deal with, maybe a couple of degrees above the actual air temperature. But again, a few days ago, it felt like 87 in Pleasanton. Now it just feels like the upper 70s. Still, you know, it's not bone dry air by any means, but at least it is dropping a little bit. And as things dry out and mold has gone down, that's the uh, lowest reading we've had. From mold in about the past month. So temperatures will pretty much stay steady from where they are right now, really thanks to the cloud cover. Uh, yesterday we had all that very high humidity. I mean, it's still it was just thick as can be in the afternoon. Plus we had cloud cover, so that kept temperatures at uh, right around 90 here in town. And we should be a couple of degrees above that today with that slightly, slightly drier air. We'll still have a heat index still going to be in the upper 90s, close to 100 here and low uh, low hundreds, I should say, and then low hundreds, especially down to the uh, south and west, but no heat advisories or anything like that in effect today. And the weekend forecast heating up just a little bit, but still some lower humidity in the afternoon. Any rain in the future? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest, sir? Hey, Mike, well, we're monitoring a situation that's happening off 90 and 36. This is a view from Trans Guide right now. Not showing too much right now. You can see traffic is coming this way to the downtown downtown San Antonio area, but we do have a major rollover that was reported in that area. Now our system has picked it up here off 90 westbound at 36, and you can see that's not impacting traffic right now, but our friends at Transguide are trying to get us a different view where it shows a rolled over vehicle in that area. Emergency crews are making their way to their scene to that scene right at this moment. So this is going to be what we'll be monitoring throughout the rest of GMSA. It looks pretty major. So again, be cautious if you're coming in from Castroville on 90 to the downtown San Antonio area or leaving the downtown San, San Antonio area, I should say, because we do have that rolled over crash. that just was reported there. Uh, but other than that, it has been pretty quiet here in the Alamo City. Traffic improving off 35. And actually, now that we look at 90, you can see in those westbound lanes starting to back up traffic just a little bit. So again, we'll be watching that one pretty closely. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times. If you are coming in from Highway 90 to the downtown San Antonio area from Castroville, things are still looking pretty good. We're looking about a 19 minute commute time. And if you're coming in from Bernie on I-10, roughly about 24 minutes, 281 from Bulverde. We're looking at 27 minutes right now. We're bringing it back here to Transguide US 90 at 36. Although things look good, we're trying to get a different view of that rollover crash. We'll be working to bring you those updates right here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. 
And you said it's affecting westbound lanes at, on 90? Right now it's affecting the eastbound lanes at 90. So eastbound. We're okay, thank you for clarification. We're staying on top of late breaking news on the northeast side of town. Fire crews dealing with a massive apartment fire. It started just after 4 this morning in the 2400 block of Harry Wurzbach Road, and there are still 32 fire units at the scene. Tiffany Huertas has been there since early this morning. Tiffany, any new information out there? Mark, we just got new information. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood is calling this a suspicious fire. But take a look. He says they believe the fire started from the second floor of the apartment building and they have detained someone who lived there. Take a look at the video from earlier. Firefighters were trying to put out the fire at this apartment complex on the 2400 block of Harry Warsbach Road. Chief Hood says 40 fire units arrived to the scene. A total of 12 apartment units are damaged. He says no one was injured, but 18 people were displaced, including children. Chief Hood also tells us some residents are staying at the clubhouse and he is mentioning that to please avoid this area. If you have to come through this, just expect a lot of delays and traffic. We'll keep you updated on KSAT.com. Reporting from the Northeast Side, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, a man is now in custody after police say he robbed a beauty store. Happened last week at the Ulta off 410 near Ingram Park Mall. We're told 28-year-old Steven Lopez and another suspect stole display colognes when a store associate tried to stop them. Police say Lopez threatened her with a gun and the pair took off. Lopez was arrested yesterday afternoon and faces a charge of aggravated robbery. This morning, authorities at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland are still trying to find out whether or not a shooting happened yesterday. This all unfolding yesterday around noon. Someone off of Lackland's facilities reported hearing two gunshots that came from off base. A spokesperson says no one was injured in the incident and the base is being assisted by multiple agencies as they track down more information. JBSA says they took the reports very seriously and they thanked local law enforcement for their help in the investigation. Construction work turns into an emergency situation after a man fell down a trench on the west side. Firefighters responded to the scene on Westland, just north of Highway 90, a West Military Drive. Crews say they were able to quickly rescue the man. Within about 30 minutes, he was taken to a local hospital with a leg injury. We want to remind you there is a dire need for blood donors. The supply is critically low here in San Antonio. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center teaming up with several local hospitals to share their pleas. The amount of blood is so low it has to be prioritized for patients who are most in need. If you'd like to schedule a donation, visit SouthTexasBlood.org. We also have a link on KSAT.com. Right now on our website, a dire call to action from San Antonio Pets Alive. They say healthy puppies and dogs are in danger of being euthanized. That's because all locations are completely full and there is no space to keep the puppies and save more. Today through Sunday, they are offering a 50% off adoption special on all dogs at all San Antonio Pets Alive locations. You can find more information about how you can help on KSET.com. Just look for the story on the homepage. Right now at 607, President Joe Biden's first foreign trip is Commander in Chief is officially underway. In between a series of high stakes meetings with world leaders, President Biden is also expected to make an announcement today about the fight against COVID-19. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, high profile meetings on President Biden's agenda ahead of his first G7 summit, touching down in England Wednesday. The president previewing his eight-day trip in a fiery speech to American troops. His high-stakes sit-down with Russian President Vladimir Putin, top of mind. I'm heading to the G7, then to the NATO ministerial, and then to meet with Mr. Putin to let him know what I want him to know. According to the White House, the president will pressure Putin on recent cyber attacks on U.S. entities, Russia's election interference, and human rights violations. We're not seeking conflict with Russia. We want a stable, predictable, predictable relationship. The United States will respond in a robust and meaningful way when the Russian government engages in harmful activities. Biden also distancing himself from the former Trump administration, declaring traditional American diplomacy is back as he looks to rebuild relationships with key U.S. allies that have frayed in recent years. Our alliances weren't built by coercion, 
or maintained by threats, we're going to make it clear that the United States is back and democracies of the world are standing together. Later today, President Biden also set to make a major announcement about the global fight against the COVID pandemic. ABC News has learned as the U.S. sits on an excess of unused doses, the Biden administration is purchasing and donating another 500 million vaccine shots to developing nations. After his meetings with leaders in the U.K. and the G7 summit, the president's next stop will be Belgium, where the NATO summit begins on Monday. Faith Abube, ABC NBC News, Washington. It's now 6.09 on your Thursday. And still ahead on GMSA, good news for Cowboys fans. We're going to tell you how Dak Prescott's recovery has been going. And outside with live cam, one more super humid day. Mike says little relief in there as he pinches his fingers together. We're going to have more on his forecast coming up. Six thirteen in morning sports a not good night for the San Antonio missions. The team definitely did not have the magic they've had over the last couple of games. Missions ended up walking 10 batters, had three errors during their loss to Midland last night. The team also hit three batters during the ball game. Final score 9-1. The series against Midland continues tonight at 7.05. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott says he is over the ankle injury he suffered last season in week five against the Giants. He says the first time he buried his ankle injury for good was on Cinco de Mayo when he did some little dance moves and felt like he was ready to go. That's when he said in his head the injury was gone. Still, he had to build up confidence on the field, and ever since the Cowboys started offseason workouts, that's what Dak has been doing. It's now been 15 weeks since Tom Brady had knee surgery and he looks in top shape for both OTAs and Bucks mandatory minicamp. But what surprised many is when Brady revealed he started having knee problems last spring. That would be right before his latest Super Bowl run. So he still managed to earn his seventh ring and another Super Bowl MVP award, throwing for over 4,600 yards and 40 touchdowns, even when he was not 100% at the age of 43 years old. Always impressed. Indeed. Very much so. Uh, there's a situation going on at Highway 90 in General McMullen. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, thanks so much, Mark Steph. Well, we want to clarify that the eastbound lanes are what's unaffected right now. Mark had asked a little bit earlier in the show. It's these westbound lanes that our drivers need to be on the lookout for. We do have a view from Transguide that, that does show that rollover crash here. And you can see right now it's impacting at least one of those lanes as traffic is being diverted into those two other lanes. We do have first responders out there, and it's hard to make out right now, but you can see see that area is where that vehicle has rolled over. Uh, all that light in the background is actually all that traffic that is starting to again build up in these <coughs> westbound lanes of Highway 90 at General McMullen. Taking a look here on the map, if we can actually I'll step out of here so you guys can see that all that red is the traffic that is building up. Traffic slowing down to 13 miles per hour right now as we do have first responders out on that scene to hopefully clear that rollover crash and uh, again, but it is causing an issue right now. But taking another wider view at the map, nothing too major to report right now. Again, it is still relatively quiet right now. That rollover crash is what we are going to be watching closely as the morning does pick up. But again, one last view here at Transguide of US 90 at General McMullen. Again, these westbound lanes at Highway 90 are what you got to watch out for, guys. Yeah, it's really backing up there as you approach 151. Thank you so much, Stephen. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. But not as humid out there, so that's some good news. Slightly, right. you said? Yeah, the little bit, <laughs> you know, small steps, as they say. So it's a bit more comfortable, and we will start to see the or continue to see the humidity drop ever so slightly, especially in the afternoons as we go into the next couple of days and that allow things to heat up a, a bit more. We're still about uh, four, maybe five degrees above the average, the normal low temperature, warm and humid this morning, the mostly sunny again, not quite as humid. It's that daily cycle that we'll be going through here and then the weekend. Yeah, it's just going to be kind of summer hot weekend with a little bit above normal temperatures. Doesn't this look good? Take a look and wait till these babies get ripe. These blackberries, mm. remember when I was a little kid we'd, at my grandmother's house, picked blackberries, but the thing is, you gotta watch out for the thorns on those bushes. Those were nasty. But that's oh, the catch. That's the catch. A sweet reward. Yeah, you go in there, it's like, oh my goodness, but yeah, oh yeah, fresh blackberries, blackberry cobbler, ice cream oh. on top. 
Why did you have to go there? It sounds so good. I know. <laughs> yeah, that a little bit of heaven. All right, lots of clouds hanging around here this morning. And again, these temperatures are still on the warm side thanks to the clouds and thanks to the humidity out there, which, yes, dew points remain well up into the 70s, so it's on the oppressive side, but they are down a couple of degrees. Dew points are compared to the past few days, and we will see that cycle that will go through in the afternoon, which is usually what we see in the in the afternoons in the summertime. Of course, the past couple of days, even yesterday, dew points remained well up in the uh, mid 70s around here, and that's why it was just so hard to even open up the, the door and walk outside. It was like walking into a wall almost. We will see humidity come up again tomorrow morning, then drop down somewhat in the afternoon. And as we get those the little bit drier air in the afternoon, drier air doesn't take as much energy to heat up. So therefore, high temperatures will go up a couple of degrees uh, each and every day or a degree or so. And so we can make it up into the mid 90s by the weekend. Uh, heat index readings will still be most areas up into the low hundreds. About 108, uh, Catula, Laredo, which is still get above 105. It can be dangerous. Your body doesn't cool itself that efficiently, but these numbers are actually down compared to the past couple of days. And also, we don't have any heat advisories, um, anything like that posted. Obviously, you still want to be careful outside, but and, and if you can do, you know, cut the grass, things like that, being outside uh, in the morning hours, that would be a lot more tolerant, although more humidity. But yeah, you just got to watch it when you're outside in the afternoon. All right, around the country. A lot of activity down here to the uh, in the southeastern United States, but for us, there's not much out there right now and some very cold air out to the Pacific Northwest. And then Minneapolis is actually the same time. Look at how that to the 70s, mid upper 70s go all the way up into the uh, northern plains, almost in toward Canada. So we've got the huge ridge of high pressure there in the middle part of the country. What that means is we don't really see much of a change around here, so it's going to be staying very consistent. As we'd say, it's a summertime weather pattern. 85 degrees, partly sunny skies at noon. So some of these low clouds will still be kind of stubborn. I think we see more sunshine later on today. Again, it's still humid, but not quite as humid as the past couple of afternoons. And so 92 will yeah, still feel warmer than it, than it actually is, but not as bad. And that'll be the situation through the weekend. A mid 90s, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. A couple of uh, showers or a thunderstorm maybe by the middle part of next week and then some clouds and knocks temperatures down. That would be good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at uh, 619, about 76 degrees. And still head on GMSA. A big win for TikTok details after the break. I gotta get out of here. What am I looking for? It's magic. Sauvage. Dior. Available at Macy's. Antibacterial cuts through tough grease with 50% less scrubbing. It also removes 99% of bacteria from your hands. Dawn Antibacterial. An easy way to clean your dishes, a smart way to wash your hands. In this morning's GMA First Look, rising rideshare prices. Prices on car services like Uber and Lyft skyrocketing as both major rideshare companies face an unprecedented driver shortage. E-commerce company Rakuten analyzed its data, finding that nationally it's seeing up to a 40% hike in rideshare pricing. And some big cities like L.A., Chicago and New York are at times seeing double that. New York City restaurants opened up and uh, grocery stores and people are going out to retail and enjoying, um, you know, enjoying behaviors that they used to. Um, that created a really uh, uh, strong surge in demand, and there just weren't the drivers to keep up with that demand, and so that's when you see the high prices. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the tips you need to get where you're going without hitting those spending speed bumps. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York.
In tech news, President Biden has revoked the Trump era executive orders that attempted to ban TikTok and WeChat. Biden signed a new order requiring a review to identify any national security risks associated with the apps with ties to China. There is ongoing concern over apps that collect users' personal data. Facebook is working on its first smartwatch, which reportedly will have a detachable camera and a heart rate monitor. It's expected to be out sometime next summer, and predictions are that it could cost about $400. And Sony has unveiled its new professional-grade drone, the AirPeak S1, designed to work with Sony cameras. Sony says it's strong enough to be able to, to be stable in winds of up to 45 miles an hour. Price tag, $9 thousand dollars yeah just nine thousand dollars just nine thousand i'm <laughs> sure we could do installments right yeah of course yeah just put it on the christmas list sure no problem about 6 24 on your thursday morning and still ahead on gmsa san antonio police and crime stoppers need your help solving a murder case we're going to have the details now we continue our coverage on an overnight fire at a northeast side apartment complex tiffany huertas will join us with a live report and taking a look out with Trans Guide this morning, we're looking at Highway 90 there at General up McMullen. We're going to have the very latest there with Stephen Cabasas. Our top story right now, a massive fire at a northeast side apartment complex has had firefighters very busy all morning. We'll have the very latest. A massive alligator found roaming a Houston area neighborhood. We're going to show you how officers got it back to the water. And no massive change to our humidity this morning. It's still hanging in there. Mike will tell us if any changes are coming. Welcome back 630 on your Thursday. It is June 10th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And yes, it's humid, but slightly better. Slightly, slightly, yeah, slightly, just a we'll little take... bit. So maybe a little less hairspray, I guess a little. OK, a little less hairspray. And then this afternoon, it'll drop down a little bit uh, in the afternoon. So that's a, the usual cycle that we have in the summertime is more humidity in the morning clouds. Then it drops down somewhat in the afternoon. So I mean, it's still going to be humid out there. You can't get away from that, but it just won't be as ridiculous, ridiculously humid as what it was. There's our uh, morning low clouds hanging around here, and the temperature right now is at 76 degrees, which, yeah, we're still about four above normal. That number, the dew point, measure moisture in the atmosphere, uh, that's above 70. It's still humid out there, but just to compare to the past couple of days, this number was about 75, 76, even yesterday afternoon. So that has come down a little bit. So we don't have as much of a heat index to deal with right now around the area. It feels like uh, 82 at Stinson. Um, so basically these numbers are what the actual air temperatures are as of right now for the, the most part. Mold is on the low side, lows to spend in about a month as things continue to uh, dry out. So after the warm, humid start, it will be not quite as humid. So we'll still have, yes, heat index readings readings up into the uh, low hundreds and especially down to the southwest but down a couple of notches from uh, the past few days and we don't have any heat advisories anything like that in uh, in effect today sunshine mid 90s over the uh, the weekend a little bit lower humidity in the afternoons and then by next week we're going to be starting off warm and humid and then midweek well, a couple of uh, showers around there maybe a thunderstorm or two and a few degrees lower thanks to some of that cloud cover details in the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos got some big problems out there right that's right Mike looking pretty busy out here from Trans guide at 90 at General McMullen. You can see that we have vehicles that are just getting their way out there this morning. Uh, looks like there was a rollover crash that happened out here off 90 in those westbound lanes right at General McMullen. You can see that we do have uh, what looks like a wrecker already out there. And from this view and what we're looking at, it looks like it may have been a truck that rolled over. So a little bit of progress, but definitely leading to some big backups here on 90. Take a look here. Seven miles per hour right now in these westbound lanes at Highway 90 at General McMullen. And it's can just continue continues to build could be an issue as the morning does pick up and we start seeing more people getting out on the roadways. Now let's take a look at another issue. We just that came up in our system 35 southbound at Martin Street. We do have a stall vehicle out there right now, not creating as many problems as we saw off Highway 90. But again, something to be on the lookout for uh, if you're heading out the door in just the next few minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times right now. If you're coming in from Floresville right now, we're th from 37. We're looking about 29 minutes right now, and if you're coming from Pleasanton, things are pleasant. 28 
eight minutes right now to downtown San Antonio and I'm from Lytle Highway from 35. That is we're looking at a 16 minute commute time to downtown San Antonio. Now let's bring it back to trans guide one last time here. Highway 90 at General McMullen looks like a little bit of progress right now, but we want to give these first responders plenty of room to get that truck out of the way. But traffic mark stuff just continues to build this morning. Thank you, Stephen. New details in a late breaking story we have been following all morning. Investigators are now calling a massive apartment fire suspicious. Started just after four this morning in the 2400 block of Harry Wurzbach on the northeast side of town. Tiffany Huertas is staying on top of this story. And Tiffany, we know you spoke to the fire chief not long ago. How are things looking out there right now? It's still very busy here, a very active scene. But San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood tells me 18 people have been displaced and he says the Red Cross is on the way to help families. Now take a look at this video from early this morning. Chief Hood is calling this a suspicious fire. Firefighters arrived to this apartment complex on the 2400 block of Harry Warsbach Road around four this morning. Flames were shooting through the roof of one of the buildings and part of the roof collapsed. Firefighters use aerial platforms to spray from above. He says 40 fire units arrived to the scene. A total of 12 apartment units are damaged, but he says no one was injured. Fire Chief Hood says family members wanting to come to the apartment complex to check on loved ones who live here should stay clear of the area for now. He says everyone is accounted for. Reporting from the northeast side, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help solving a pair of cases. The first, a murder that happened back on April 25th at Brackenridge Park. That's why police say 65-year-old Juan Apolinar was beaten. He was taken to a hospital where he later died. Investigators are looking for the person responsible. Crime Stoppers also asking for help finding the person who robbed the Vitrum Smoke Shop back on May 12th. This is in the 6800 block of San Pedro. That's over near the Quarry Market. Investigators say the person on your screen held a store employee at gunpoint and demanded cash. If you have any information about either of these cases, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. This morning, investigators still trying to determine if a 31 year old man will be charged with the shooting death of a 63 year old man at a San Antonio gas station parking lot. Police say it happened yesterday in the 11,300 block of Petranco on the west side. According to officers, the younger man told officers he was getting ready to leave the area when the older man's vehicle cut him off. Police said the younger man told investigators he shot the older man because he pointed a gun at him and fired in self defense. SAPD says the victim was hit multiple times and airlifted to a hospital where he died. An update now on coronavirus cases here at home. The seven day average now stands at 80 cases per day and no new deaths were reported. There continues to be a decrease in our hospitals. 123 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 41 are in the intensive care unit and 19 are on ventilators. The Texas Department of State Health Services reports nearly 56% of Bear County residents ages 12 and up have at least one dose of vaccine. 45% are fully vaccinated. Metro Health continues to help with pop-up clinics around town. More clinics are scheduled for today. First one starts at 10 a.m. at Carver Library. The entire list is on our website at ksat.com. Scary moments for Houston area residents after a huge alligator was found roaming through a neighborhood. The full share police department says it took multiple officers to get the gator back into the water. Andy Sirota has a report from our sister station KPRC in Houston. What a catch. Body camera video shows full shear police officer Nikki Braley using his roping skills to wrangle an alligator. He was still at the station after working a 12 hour shift. Here he is with the gator on cell phone video at a different angle. He's a uh, former cowboy slash roper. He got that rope right around that alligator's neck. A jogger spotted the gator in the Cross Creek Ranch community around 630 this morning and immediately called full shear police who were used to handling these types of calls. But this particular gator was larger than normal. I've only seen one other alligator larger than this one. This one's about eight foot. I mean, must have weighed six, seven hundred pounds. There we go. So heavy they needed more manpower. It took a team of five officers to pull it across the street and get it back into the lake. He's eating your rope. He's eating. 
That's all right. Stop right there. Once they got it onto the grass near the water, they tried throwing a towel over its head. Uh, we throw a towel over the uh, alligator's face, uh, the eyes, and, and basically it calms the alligator down. We're able to, to sometimes get on top of the alligator and wrap its mouth up, like again, to stay away from the sharp edges. Captain Mike McCoy, who'd been shooting this with his cell phone, jumps in to help and uses an animal control pole with a noose turn backwards to steer the gator back into the water. Our practice out here in Fulcher is not to uh, dispatch the alligator. We love the alligators out here too. As long as they're not a nuisance, we'll take care of them if they take care of us. That was Andy Sirota from uh, KPRC in Houston reporting. And time now is 637 and about 77 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, how new teaching methods can help your child learn as we return to normalcy. And just ahead, we're talking about restaurants that got perfect scores on their recent health inspections is all part of the best of Behind the Kitchen Door. Welcome back. It's time for a look at perfect restaurant scores from around the Alamo City. We call it Best of Behind the Kitchen Door. And then this morning we are looking at Chipotle out there on 1604 at 407 West Loop 1604 South. Moving along, we have Domino's at 13402 West Avenue, also on our perfect score list this week. They also ace their inspection at 410 Diner at 8315 Broadway there along Loop 410. So did Camori at 410 Isom Road. And we also have Mod Pizza at 5619 West Loop 1604 North. And if your place got a perfect score in the last 30 days, let us know. Send me an email at bkd at ksat.com. We try to run these about once a week right here on GMSA. Steph, back to you. A lot of good options there. Yes. Now that everything's kind of reopened. Yes, that's good. Good to see all those perfect scores. Thanks, Mark. And the pandemic has made it difficult for teachers to create successful learning environments. Now, nearly 27% of teachers are considering leaving their profession or taking a leave of absence due to COVID-19. As David Sears reports, a study finds that new approaches to teaching can make a difference. The COVID pandemic has dramatically affected how students learn. On our desk, we have like shields. There are like plastic shields that are see-through so we can see everything. If somebody gets COVID, they have to be quarantined, so a lot of people haven't shown up some days. Teachers across the country have also missed out on professional learning events that introduce new strategies. In a study, scientists tested an online evidence-based approach on over 100 teachers. The strategy encourages educators to prioritize certain learning methods with peer interactive learning being the most important. Education scientists found that when ICAP is successfully executed, students thrive. Teachers and even homeschooling parents can use interactive and constructive strategies by asking deep and open-ended questions when introducing a new idea. Some examples are, what do you think of your parents' ideas? How do you decide? Or what might happen? It's a technique that prompts students to use critical thinking skills, which leads to better learning. David Sears, KSA 12 News. Right now, 642. And it looks like the situation on Highway 90 and General McMullen has cleared. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, Steph, good update here on Highway 90 westbound at General McMullen. The view from Trans Guide shows that traffic is running nice and smoothly again here off the westbound lanes of Highway 90. We did have a rollover crash that was causing quite the issues out there for our morning commuters. Take a look right here on the map. We're still seeing a little bit of the residual effects from that crash right now. Still slowing down traffic to about 17 miles per hour. Again, that rollover truck has been cleared out of the area, but we still have a few of those uh, delays that are slowdowns that it is causing. I should say another thing that's still been out here is a stall right at 35 southbound at Martin Street. Thankfully, this one not creating as many headaches for drivers that are heading in this direction. But once again, we'll be watching the lanes closely this morning and we're going to bring it back to Trans Guide one last time. Very nice update here at Highway 90 and General McMullen. So drive safe this morning. Mike has a fun picture for us. Yeah, <laughs> Lily the Queen. Yeah, it, if it just doesn't make you smile, I don't know what will. I, mean, I don't know what's better, just the dog enjoying the day or the goggles? The dog. All of the above. All yeah. Of, yeah. They're called doggles. Doggles? <laughs> <laughs> you making that up or do you? No, I think that's actually for real. Oh, is it for oh. real? Yeah, I, I was think like, so. oh, how cute. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, because they make them just, just for, 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 our, for our furry ones because they have to, you know, the strap has to be different and etc. All right. Nice. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. 
And don't forget your sunglasses. Don't forget your sunscreen as well. And your Our, doggles. And your doggles. Your doggles. Yes, indeed. Uh, we've got, even on the cloudiest days, don't forget, you still need uh, sunscreen, according to all the experts, because you can get uh, nasty sunburn even on the cloudiest of days. And we will see more sunshine later on today after these morning clouds break up a little bit. And again, heat index readings later on. Yeah, they'll still be well up into the low hundreds, but not quite as high as the past couple of days. No advisory has been mentioning that all morning long. No advisories are issued, but obviously, want to take it easy this afternoon, but we'll get a slight break in the humidity. We'll get more into our usual summertime cycle where there's more humidity in the morning. It drops down a little bit in the afternoon. It's slightly lower this morning. I'm mean, still humid, but we'll take anything we can get right now. So clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. Same thing tomorrow and going on in through the weekend. Morning clouds and We'll have plenty of sunshine this weekend. That's going to help. And as things dry out, help to warm things up as well. So uh, low 90, 90 yesterday, 92 today, and then go up a degree or so each of the next couple of degrees. So we'll be in the mid 90s by the uh, the weekend and then going into late Monday. Now, again, this does tend to kind of do things with a broad brush, but there's going to be the chance for a couple of uh, showers around here, maybe late, late Monday into early Tuesday and then throughout the day Tuesday, a couple of showers or perhaps a, a thunderstorm around the area. Not a great chance of rain, but just a little disturbance moving on in here. So as of right now, that area of high pressure, that's dominating things in summertime keeps us high and dry, helps to heat things up. We dry out. That's going to continue to warm us up a little bit. But the position of it is just to the west of us. So we are on the, uh, as it kind of slides off to the west a little bit, we're on the, the front side of that. And so what that's going to do is take some of these little disturbances and kind of sweep them around here. And so that's what is going to help with the chance for uh, a couple of showers around here. And we're just talking about little kind of glitches in the atmosphere right here, but that'll be enough to give us that small chance for uh, a couple of showers around here as we go in toward the middle of next week. So today going to be up to 85 degrees at noon, partly sunny skies. We'll still have some of these stubborn low clouds around here. Slightly lower humidity today. I'm mean, still humid, but we'll take anything we can get. Not quite the uh, just the, the wet towel that we had around yesterday. And same thing the next couple of days. And as we dry out a little bit in the afternoon, that allows temperatures to warm up more easily. So we'll make it up to 93 tomorrow, 94 over the weekend with morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, flag day on Monday. Display the beautiful stars and stripes proudly on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, maybe a, a shower or two. Right now, rain chances aren't that great, but just that mention of it and cloud cover will keep temperatures down just a little bit. If you guys want to turn down the oven midweek, that's OK. Yeah, with we're us. OK with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll take I the agree. cloud cover. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 647, about 77 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, the story of one woman who experienced chronic hallucinations. We're going to show you how she battled her way through schizoaffective disorder. Outside with live cam on your Thursday. Glad you're with us here on GMSA. The news you need to know before you go is coming up. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, President Biden's big announcement that massive 500 million vaccine donation to countries in need around the world as the president gears up for that high stakes G7 summit and his meeting with President Putin. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki joins us right here on GMA. An investigation underway here at this apartment complex on the northeast side. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood calling this a suspicious fire. Firefighters arrived to this apartment complex on Harry Warsbach Road near Ritterman Road around 4 this morning. Flames were shooting through the roof of one of the buildings at one point. One of the, the roof collapsed. A total of 12 apartment units are damaged. But Chief Hood says no one was injured and a total of 18 people are displaced. The American Red Cross is on the way to help families. Reporting from the northeast side, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And just a reminder, Crime Stoppers asking for help finding the person who robbed the Vitrum Smoke Shop back on May 12th. It's in the 6800 block of San Pedro near Oblate Drive. Investigators say the person on your screen held a store employee at gunpoint and demanded cash. If you have any information, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen, and that's 210-224-STOP.
This morning, a heads up for travelers. The TSA is warning about staffing shortages at more than 130 airports this summer. The problem so bad, TSA office workers are now being asked to volunteer for airport duty. With more Americans traveling again, airports are busier, wait times are longer, and the TSA is under pressure. Some flyers now being told to arrive three hours before their flight. Race car driver Tommy Joe Martins tweeted video from Charlotte's airport saying, Congrats, Charlotte Airport, for the single biggest TSA checkpoint disaster I've ever seen. In Austin, some people are waiting two hours just to get through security. There's going to be a lot more busy days really heading into the future, which is why we are encouraging folks to plan ahead, give themselves that extra time. The TSA hopes to hire 6,000 new officers, offering incentives like a $1,000 bonus. The message for, for the traveling public is please look at TSA as a great place to come work. The travel frustrations extend beyond the airport. There's also a shortage of taxi, Uber, and Lyft drivers to get you there. And that means a big spike in prices, up to 40% higher nationwide for car share services in recent weeks. One man says his 20-mile Uber ride to New York's JFK airport cost him $248, tweeting, Today my Uber ride from Midtown to JFK cost me as much as my flight from JFK to San Francisco. New York City restaurants are opened up and uh, grocery stores and people are going out to retail and enjoying, um, you know, enjoying behaviors that they used to. Um, that created a really uh, uh, strong surge in demand and there just weren't the drivers to keep up with that demand. And so that's when you see the high prices. Many drivers also quit during the pandemic and have yet to return. Uber now paying bonuses, hoping to get them back. Another reason for the shortage, many drivers started working for delivery services during the pandemic, where they could often make more money. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. We are approaching five minutes till seven. And we're looking at some holdups on 1604. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, Mark, Seb, it seems like when one issue resolves, another one pops up around this time. And this is the view from Transguide at Loop 1604 at Kyle Seal Parkway. We have a major crash that's being reported out there. TxDOT saying that this crash is happening here in these westbound lanes right at Kyle Seal Parkway. And you can see also in these eastbound lanes, we have a few vehicles that are back to back right now as the morning's getting started. This is going to be quite the headache for our drivers. And you can see on our maps, the crash right now is not too far from I, uh, 1604 westbound at Hausman. And you can see again, traffic building and also in these eastbound lanes to 17 miles per hour, slowing down actually. Uh, now we did have that rollover crash over here of Highway 90. Thankfully, traffic is actually back to normal in that area there, so nothing too major to report, but that crash did cause some major issues coming in or leaving the downtown San Antonio, I should say, from Highway 90 West. Now jumping over here, we still have this stall that's also creating a little bit of an issue here off I-35 southbound at Martin Street, but take a look here in these northbound lanes of 35. We're seeing a little bit of a slowdown now that the morning is picking Picking up and people are getting out on the roadways, but this is going to be the big one that we're going to be watching, Mike, because traffic just looks like a mess out there this morning. But of course, we will be right here to get you through it. Thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, still pretty much the same start we've had every other morning, but it is a little bit lower. We have a little bit lower humidity this morning. 76 right now in town, 74 up the road in uh, Balverde, and mold is on the low side throughout the day. 92 for a high temperature, slightly lower humidity in the afternoon, slightly, so not quite as ridiculously oppressively humid and uh, temperatures will go up a little bit toward the uh, the weekend with plenty of sunshine. By the way, today is National Iced Tea Day. Ah, ah appropriate. Sweet or unsweet? Both. <laughs> oh, I like the Arnold Palmers. Oh, those are good too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Half and half for me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Unsweet. 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 Well, yeah, less calories. Oh, you're sweeter <laughs> than that, Mike. Come on.